Hey guys, well, good morning and welcome to day 18. We have a fun name today. We're going to talk about Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Boy, he's there all the time. And I just want to start by an interesting story. I was chatting with a friend and she talked about her journey through the fast. And she said, when I first started the fast, I was so afraid. It's like all I thought about, I thought about failing. I thought about, I can't do it. I thought it's going to be too hard. And she said, I realized it was the enemy trying to keep me from fasting because I believe with fasting is so much power and so much breakthrough. And she shared with me, she said, I can't believe that this has actually been a lot easier than I thought. All the things in my mind that were keeping me from wanting to do it, because we'd talked about a week or so before we actually started. And she said that whole week I kept thinking, I know I can't do it. I'm going to be starving. It's not going to work. And then people are going to ask me, do you realize the enemy wants to try to keep you from victory? The enemy is going to put all kinds of things in your mind to keep you from breakthrough. A couple nights ago, I was, um, had done my fast all day and I was actually getting pretty hungry. And it was about 4.45. Now, Pastor Phil and I eat at five o'clock. We eat at sundown at five o'clock and it goes pretty quickly, to be honest with you. I get full really quick and I'm done usually by 5.45 and then I'm done. And then I don't eat again until the next day at five. And so um, I was, it was like five, I was 4.45 and I had everything ready. We were gonna eat at five. And I was so hungry and I thought, well, it's close. I'm just going to go ahead and nibble. I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, I don't live under legalism. It's not like God's going to go, oh, I cancel out your fast today. You ate 15 minutes early. But then I realized, no, this isn't about eating. This is about discipline. This is about telling the enemy no. See, I can justify stuff in my mind and it wouldn't have hurt. If I ate it, I ate it. But I realized that I looked at the enemy. I looked at the food that I had ready to eat at five o'clock and I said no. And when I realized I said no to a desire, I was saying no to the enemy. And something in me just made me angry enough or agitated enough that I waited till 505. Now you say, you're silly, Tammy. I know it was, but it was a little game I was playing to tell the enemy he cannot win in my life because greater is he, almighty God, that is in me than he, the enemy in the world who tries to rob, steal, and destroy. And that's the name we look at today, the name Jehovah Shammah. He is there. Now we find this name in the book of Ezekiel. And if you know anything about the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was a priest, he was a prophet, he was around the same time as Daniel. So we read about Daniel a couple days ago. And, and guys, I'm going to really encourage you to read through these books, to study not just the passages that I give you, but take time to read the book of Daniel, read the book of Jeremiah, read the book of, Daniel, uh, of Ezekiel. So here's Daniel, here's Ezekiel. This is a time when the children of Israel were taken captive by the Babylonians. And, and it, literally Ezekiel had been really ministering and prophetically speaking for 20 years to the people. And it is a very prophetic book. And it talks a lot about the prophecies to come, the millennial to come, but it's very relevant for today. So make sure as you read that, you're asking God to show you, just like he, want, he gave to Ezekiel, just like he gave to Daniel, dreams and visions. He tells us in Joel that he's gonna pour out his spirit and that we're gonna have dreams and visions. I believe God wants to give you a dream. He wants to give you a vision. He wants to inspire you and empower you. But what I love about this passage, and it's so cool, it's actually the very last chapter of the book of Ezekiel in the very last verse. And in that last chapter, Ezekiel is laying out for the tribes of Israel and he's laying out Jerusalem and he's talking about the tribes and he's talking about the gates and he's talking about this millennial Jerusalem that will come and literally laying out exactly which tribe will be where. And God's given him a, a vision of what it's gonna look like prophetically and yet naturally what it's gonna all look like. And the very last verse in the very last chapter of Ezekiel is where we find our passage today. And all around shall be 18,000 cubics and the name of the city from that day shall be Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. He is telling them, listen to me guys, we have been in captivity 
for many, many years. We have been in bondage in a foreign land to a foreign king. But God has given me a vision that he is going to set us free and that he is going to build the new Jerusalem. And in that Jerusalem, Jehovah Shammah will be there. I'm telling you guys, I have a little new energy today. Yesterday, I think I was feeling a little fatigued and that's gonna happen in your fast, but today I'm energized. The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. Say it over and over and over. Decree it, declare it, speak it, see it. He is there. It is time that we begin to give life to our destiny. Put words before you. Call on Jehovah Shammah in your life. When you're feeling discouraged or defeated or alone, call on Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Remember I said to you, memorize these names of God. Write them down. You can go to the back of your book. We're almost there. And I have a couple little quizzes for you to test your knowledge. See if you can lay out the passage with the scripture and the name of God, with, with the reference. See how much you've uh, retained and how much you know, but learn these names and cry these names out. Today in our fasting focus, we're going to look at a passage in 2 Samuel, and this is fasting for a broken spirit. Now, many of us have had times in our life of a broken spirit. I have lost loved ones. I have had a broken heart. I have had discouragement and defeat, and that's part of living life. That's part of being human. It doesn't mean that God has abandoned us because our Jehovah Shammah is always there. But we will go through times of discouragement. And that's what we find today in our passage in 2 Samuel. If you read 1 Samuel, you'll find out that this was the anointing of David, that he would be the king after Saul. But David was waiting. He was very patient. He waited many, many years after he was anointed to be king because Saul was still the king. And he waited patiently. But the story we pick up here is one where David finds out that Saul has been killed and Saul's son, Jonathan, has been killed. They were at war. They were at a, with a very brutal war. And you can read that in the last chapter of 1 Samuel, um, the last chapter um, of, that, of that book there. But we pick up in 2 Samuel 1, now stay with me. David finds out that his beloved friend, Jonathan, has been killed and even Saul who has brought ridicule and torment and threats to David has been killed. And it tells us he weeps and he fasts. So what I want us to do today is I want us to take a moment and realize just like King David, and that's what his fast was about, he brought his fast to God because he was so broken and so burdened. The king had been killed. His friend Jonathan had been killed. God was getting ready now to exalt him to be king. And it said he had a broken spirit. I want to ask you right now, if there's something in your heart that is broken, can you just stop in today's time of fasting and ask Jehovah Shama to be there for you? I don't know what you're going through. I know there are a lot of people struggling in their marriages right now. There are many who are struggling with their children right now. There are many that are struggling with finances right now. There are many who are just feeling defeated and discouraged. And I'm not trying to be all down in the mouth. <laughs> I'm not trying to be sad. I'm just telling you that I know that we're living in a day where the enemy is trying to bring discouragement. He is trying to make us feel broken hardened and burdened. But I'm telling you, just as you read through this passage and just as David fasted and then he got up and he moved on to his next assignment, God would use him as king like he had not used any other king. Listen, this is so good right now. Bring your brokenness to Jehovah Shammah. Bring your discouragement and your despair. But I'm telling you, he is there. He is the God of new beginnings. He is the God of hope and prayer and joy. We've said this in many of our days along the journey. Speak life over yourself. Speak destiny over yourself. Surround yourself with the presence of God. I think what happened this morning when I began to worship, I just felt the presence of God. There's times where I'm just, I'm rejoicing. There's times where I have tears. There's time that I have laughter. That's part of what it means to have an experience with God. 
And, and we are very close to finishing our fast right now. I wanna make sure that through my coaching and through this book that I've really taught you how to go deeper, how to yield and hear and listen and have a deep personal relationship with God. That's what this is for. So today as we close in our prayer, I pray that you take these next 24 hours, go over your discussion questions, do not be in a hurry, but remember throughout your life to call on the name Jehovah Shammah, for he is there. Join me in our prayer together. Dear Jehovah Shammah, thank you for always being there. In good times and in bad, you are always there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Listen, he will not forsake you. Even though you feel like he is miles away, he will not forsake you. I trust you to know how to lead and guide the steps of my life. Please teach me to follow your ways. That's a prayer. You just prayed that. Teach me to follow your ways. That means when he teaches, we must listen, we must learn, and we must obey. Well, guys, wow, we just have three days left on our journey together, and I pray that you've seen breakthrough. I pray that you do not give up on what you're asking God for. I truly believe that we're going to see a corporate revival. I believe that this fast has been a fast unto God, and I thank you for being a part of what God wants to do, not only in our church, but in our nation, our hearts, and our homes. Love you guys so much. Have a great day. I'll see you in the morning. God bless. Mm -hmm.